What is going on, everybody? Welcome to another video. Yes, I'm not on the tripod right now because too many cars here won't all fit in the frame, so I got to pull the camera back a little bit uh, to talk about these cars. Today, we're going to be looking at my custom Ryan Sieg diecast. I've wanted to talk more about Ryan Sieg stuff this year, but it hasn't been a great season, so I haven't really had anything to say uh, that I really want to talk about. I think the same thing can be said about NASCAR in general. It's just kind of needlessly frustrating to talk about NASCAR and all that stuff. I mean, it's just so, <laughs> it's so divisive right now. So yeah, I haven't gotten a chance to really talk about it at all this year. Plus, I mean, more people like the F1 stuff and I like making those more usually anyway. I originally was planning on making videos for each one of these cars. So it would be five videos essentially right now. Uh, and I, I only ever made one for the first Ryan C Custom. And that video ended up being 17 minutes about. And it just way too long for talking about one car. I just kind of dwelled on stuff a little bit too long. And so I want to talk about all these cars. I don't want to make a bunch of 17 minute videos. Uh, so I'm just going to talk about all of them today. And hopefully the video, I mean, I'm fine with this video being 17 minutes or more because we're going to be talking about five cars. So hopefully, hopefully this video is not super long and the, the people who want to watch this video do like it because I do, I, I mean, I like these cars and I like talking about Ryan Sieg. So I haven't been able to do that and I have not talked about these four cars at all, ever. So I don't even think I've really, I mean, I've shown them all, but I haven't. They don't have their own dedicated video, so I'm going to finally get to do that today. So let's uh, pull the cam put the camera on the tripod, start up the mic, and uh, you guys get to see the sort of the back behind the scenes almost of what my filming setup looks like. So let's start with this car first and then move on to the ones we actually haven't talked about yet. All right, and here we are, the first Ryan C Custom. Like I've already said a million times, I've already made a full video on this car. So I'm going to do my best to hit the bullet points about this one, but not really spend too much time on it. So this car, this livery is 2015. I made this die cast in 2018. So, so my first custom ever made it in 2018. That was quite a bit of time ago. It's kind of strange how that works, but I won't dwell on time passing. <laughs> Picked this scheme because I always, I always really liked this scheme. I don't know if it's because of the like simplistic nature of it. Um, also black, yellow, and red were kind of I always and still are the RSS racing colors. So I think this is a good scheme that kind of just represents Ryan Sieg racing as a whole. Very simple uh, especially for 2015 when they didn't really have any sponsors besides Uncle Bob, of course. I don't make my own decals. I always buy them. So that's the main problem, I think, with this diecast is that I didn't really know what I was getting into. Um, so stuff like the decals, I mean, you can see the black does not really match up with the paint. Um, the sticker black, I mean, doesn't match up with the paint black. Stuff like the jack stands here don't line up with the die cast. I don't know what base the stickers were made for, but certainly not an Xfinity series die cast, which by the way, this started out as a Chase Elliott die cast. I don't have a picture of the car itself, but this is what it was supposed, this is what it looked like when I got it. Uh, you can see the exhausts don't line up and the fenders don't really line up either. Uh, you can see right there. So that was the main issue. Uh, the front is the worst. I didn't even talk about the front yet. Uh, the front is just a mess on this car. I had to do so much cutting to get the grill to fit in uh, the little slot uh, that I just, it, it doesn't look, it looks like crap, but it, it it's fine. Uh, but ultimately, I mean, you got to start somewhere and I didn't know a whole lot about any of the process I used going into this. So uh, one thing I can say, and this is like the most backhanded compliment to myself I could make. Uh, every time I make a new die cast, this one gets a little bit worse, which I know sounds bad, but uh, the other ones just are getting better and it all had to start from somewhere. So, you know, this one is not, I still like this one a lot. It still represents a lot from what I, what I liked about Ryan C when I first 
started following that team and driver and stuff. Uh, it doesn't have a name banner. Uh, I, well, I, as Elliot, clearly, but I just tried to Sharpie it out. So it's got a lot of little problems, but those would all be fixed uh, in later diecast. The main thing about this one uh, is that it is signed by Ryan Sieg. I got it signed before the 2020 Daytona 500. And uh, this was the only custom I had, the only Ryan C custom I had uh, at the time of that. So I've made three more since then. I don't think it'll be the only one I ever get signed, but you never know. You don't know what the future holds. So we'll see uh, what happens in the future. The last thing I want to note is that the whole back is one sticker. I didn't cut the pieces out individually. So uh, as you as you could see earlier, um, black does not really match up at all with the paint and it's still a little dusty actually. So it actually opens on this one, but it's super difficult. So I would glue them down for the rest of them, but it's got a little paint chip because of that. But yeah, that's really all that I have to say about this car because I've already made the video about it and I think I've hit all the points that I needed to. And if I missed them, I'll sure I'll talk about uh, them when I look at the next car. So finally, after a year, a year after I started this series of custom die casts, we are finally going to look at the second Ryan C custom. So here we go. And here it is. This is the PYT Sports Ryan Sieg. I think it's from 2018, this scheme. Uh, I can't really say why I picked this scheme. I honestly think it was just because of the blue. I, I think I just wanted something different from the first one. And blue is obviously opposite of red or... I don't, I don't know if the color wheel supports that, but blue is different than red. I did not make this car until the pandemic started in the beginning of 2020. Uh, I bought the decals in 2019. I just never got around to making the car itself. Really, there aren't any problems with it. I mean, I mean, there are, there are some problems with it, but we'll get to those. A lot of the problems that I had with the first one, I was able to fix with this one. So you can see, uh, I wasn't very precise with the cutting on the first one, but this one, I think I did a pretty good job around like the paint details. You don't see the black uh, decal as much as you do with the other colors. I cut as much of the black off as I could, uh, except for around the sponsor, but there was really nothing I could do about that. Uh, the decals fit pretty nicely around the fenders. You don't see the black paint underneath the fenders at all. And one thing I did was I left the decal off the side skirts because they just so happened to be black. So I didn't feel like I needed to put a decal for that. I just leave the side skirts black. So I think those look a lot better. Obviously, there are some parts where the black of the decal still shows up and those still look a little bit wonky but I don't think it really looks that bad when it's sitting on a shelf, but, and up close, it looks a little weird, but there's really nothing I could do about that uh, when I'm, I, got, I mean, I could have used clear back paper, but that, I like I said, I'm buying decals from someone else, so really can't do that. Here's the back of this car. Um, I cut all the pieces out individually, so it still looks a little wonky around the PYT Sports um, logo and the basketball, or what, I seriously called that shit a basketball, bro. The baseball, the weird demonic baseball logo. Um, it looks kind of weird, but I don't think it looks that bad, honestly. I think the front is a huge improvement on this car. It's not, I feel like it's almost perfect uh, by the Chevy logo and the upper, or the grill by the headlights. I think it's almost perfect. You could just see a little paint underneath there, but uh, I think it turned out really good. And another thing I really like is that for the bottom grills, um, they're kind of got a gray, bluish tint, so they really pop off uh, the black paint. So you can see them really well. A lot of times the decals are just so dark you can't even see them on the black paint. That's something we'll see uh, a little bit later. The roof number was a little bit too big, so it kind of wrinkles over the pillars right here, but that is not too bad. One problem I did have with this die cast is that uh, the paint I used, I was not painting very close because I didn't want the paint to like puddle up and pool up on the car. So it ended up giving me like kind of a roughish uh, finish sort of on this car. And then I ran out of paint and painted the hood with a more professional type of paint. So the hood and the car itself do not look similar. It's clearly different paint, 
but I think that still looks fine and it's not that big of a deal. Definitely the worst part about this cars are the name banners. Uh, this was originally a burger -fi Tyler Reddick. I think Tyler Reddick, I think that's who drove the nine. Uh, and what I did for this one is I used white out to block, uh, to paint over the Reddick and then put the Sieg sticker on, but you can kind of see where the whiteout was because it's not exactly very smooth. And the back I just used, I just covered the whole thing and it sort of looks weird by the, like where they do like the track bar adjustments and stuff. So it didn't turn out perfect, um, but it's got shark fins. It's got the American ethanol thing. So basically every problem I had with the first one, this one fixed. There's no problem with oversprays, which would be a problem I would find on the next car. And so in many ways, this one is probably the most like perfect, but it is also just a black car. It's a car I painted black and nothing else. So challenging wise, challenge wise, um, I won't, I wouldn't say it's the most, uh, but that is the PYT sports. I have no idea what that sponsor is. I don't even know if it still exists anymore, uh, but that's the PYT sports Ryan Sieg. So now, Let's move into the modern era of Ryan Sieg, if you will. And that starts with the 2020 CMR Roofing Chevrolet, the first full-time sponsor of Ryan Sieg. And the first custom I ever did that wasn't just a black car that I put stickers on. Uh, I had to do some more expert level painting. I, I, I don't know exactly what to call it. I didn't just paint it one color and do decals uh, like I did. This car was primer, of course, and then the base coat was white, and then I taped it up and then painted the front here blue, uh, and then I retaped it up and I painted the side skirts black because I didn't want to do, the, I didn't want to have the sticker issue that I had with the first car. And I also painted the spoiler back. About, uh, buh, buh, buh. I also painted the spoiler black, and it did not turn out great. Specifically, the spoiler. Uh, and I also had a few problems with blue overspray uh, in a couple areas right here. So it's definitely. I mean, it's similar to the first car, and that there was a lot of you got to start somewhere with this one. I think the decal work is really good though, because it's it's pretty it's pretty flush with the fenders. Um, I think the contingencies are in the wrong spot, but that's a fault of the decal and not my own. Because I didn't use, because this car has a base of white, I feel like the sticker white kind of blends in a little bit more with the white paint. You can still see it obviously in some places, um, but I think it blends in a little bit better. Unfortunately, the blue on the CMR roofing does not. You can very clearly tell that's a sticker, and I don't know why. For whatever reason, when I painted the hood, it left a lot of white speckles in there. So I should have redone the hood. And so for whatever reason, the hood has these white dots that look like dust or like snow for some reason. Um, but I, I mean, I don't think it looks that bad. Uh, the thing, there are two things that I really do not like about this car and it's the front, which I think most people say kind of looks fine. Um, but you see here, uh, it's got just white for some reason. The front of the 39 last year changed so many times. Sometimes this light blue part wasn't there. Sometimes it was white here. Sometimes it was blue. It just kind of depended on what race you were at. I really debated on whether or not I even wanted to have this light blue on here. In a perfect world, I would have made the car that was just the darker navy up front, but I couldn't get the decals for that. And so this light blue part does not look really great. Plus I got, I had to put it on at a time I wasn't really prepared to do that. The sticker got wet, so I kind of had to put it on uh, or I would have to throw it all away basically. I would have to throw the whole car away. Uh, and so I was kind of forced into putting this on there when I didn't really want to. So the front sticker is not amazing, but I think the grills are fine. The grills are dark though, like I mentioned with the last car, which had a tinted blue grills. The grills are dark, so not really hard to see on this one because the car is blue. That'll be more of a problem with the next one. Uh, another thing I don't like is this right here with the back. Uh, this is Lionel's fault. I have no idea why they did like the super speedway uh, arrow for the Chevy diecast for 2019 and 2020. Uh, they just look huge. I mean, it's so bulky. 
It's not going to be easy for me to show this, but like the bottom of the, the bottom of the rear end of the car right here is so much higher. I had to like spread all these decals out to make them look correctly. And I just think this specifically this white space right here, I think makes it look terrible, at least the back. Um, I, I really wish that the Chevy decal or the Chevy die cast were just normal. Other than that though, I think it's pretty good for a first attempt at like having to do multiple colors on a car. Uh, here's my solution to the uh, name banner. You can still see the Xfinity logo on the die cast in the middle there. Uh, and I just used the sticker and covered the whole thing. So I think it looks, I think it looks better than the uh, other one. And then you can see this is what I did here for the rear window. Uh, one thing I forgot, I totally forgot about this. This die cast is riveted together. It isn't screwed together like the um, uh, cars in the past. Like the windows are like riveted on. And that was a, that was, that was, it was a bitch getting this car apart. All right. Like it sucked getting this car apart. And the rear window actually broke. So this car took me forever because it was riveted together. I totally forgot. Uh, that that made me want to stop doing these cars that they would rivet they riveted the Chevys together uh, That was so annoying having to drill this car apart So very easily I could have just drilled through the die cast and have to throw the whole thing away. So that was super annoying and Because of that it was really annoying getting stuff like the windows back into place But I think all in all it fits together really nicely and it was a good first attempt with doing um, more expert painting um and so that is going to transition us into uh not a ryan sieg car it's rss racing but it is not ryan sieg and it is this one right here myatt snyder the 93 it's still rss racing i wanted to make all three of the rss racing cars last year the 39 93 and 38 um, I never made the 38, but I still have the decals for it, so it may be a future project, but I don't really know. I wanted to make the Louisiana Hot Sauce Myatt Snyder, but I could not get the decals for that when I was trying to buy them, so I ended up getting stuck with this weird... Many of you guys are probably familiar or have seen this scheme. It's the Psy Apps scheme. I think that's how you pronounce it. It's a CJ McLaughlin staple. I mean, he brings this scheme wherever he goes. And in 2020, he was supposed to run like 20 races in the 93. And then when the NASCAR came back after the pandemic, he was taken off the entry list. And we got this car right here, driven by Myatt Snyder. That's very clearly the SIAP scheme, but sponsored by Superior Essex and the Rosend thing. And then a couple and then a couple weeks later, it was announced that Myatt Snyder was gonna drive the 93 for the rest of the season except for the two, the last two races. CJ McLaughlin only ended up driving the first and last race of the season. So very weird scheme that this is. It doesn't have a lot of the overspray issues. This is really the only one right here. Um, it is riveted together. It is got the really ugly rear end um, like the other Ryan Seed car. And honestly, the sticker quality, I don't think is that good. I think it's kind of low res, the sticker or the decals. Um, from this one, so that was really disappointing. Uh, this car, though, it's the same. I painted it white at first, and then taped it up and painted it black. Uh, you can kind of you can see the paint line right here um, where I stopped the black and started the white. Uh, this car, actually, I almost didn't make it either. Not only I was not really interested in this scheme, uh, and what I did was I painted it white and then taped it up too quickly to paint the black on. And so when I took the tape off. Um, it looked horrible and so I had to put this down for a couple weeks and I came back to it and was like you know what I'll finish it but this one almost didn't happen uh, the most challenging part was undoubtedly the deck lid right here because the way I had to tape it up was kind of weird uh, and paint the deck lid black but the rest of the car was white I have no idea why they did it like that the spoiler does not really look that good either I ended up giving up on painting the spoiler for the next car but overall I still think this one turned out pretty nicely. I mean, I think it was the best car I made until I made the next one, which is always what I think. Luckily, I didn't have to put a sticker on the name banner because this car didn't have one. It just had that regular Xfinity banner. And here is the back one. Both this car and the last Ryan Sieg were Chase Elliott, 
I don't even remember what the sponsor is off the top of my head, but these were both the same car to start with because that was the cheapest one I could find. Both riveted together, both kind of a mess. I haven't shown the bottom. Uh, I think the first die cast, I painted the bottom, but for the rest of them, I just left it unpainted. So you can see, uh, I mean, you can even see some of the old paint still on the bottom right here. So that's what that looks like. All the hoods have been glued down since the second car. And uh, yeah, let's get on to the last one, which is the one I'm most excited to talk about because it's the newest one. And that is, I guess technically this would be the modern era of Ryan Sieg because this is the CMR roofing Ford diecast, the first non-Chevrolet Ryan Sieg diecast. And I think this one, for many reasons, is the best. But obviously, I'm going to think that for one, this die cast, all the windows were screwed together. There was no bullshit with the rivets. So it was pretty easy to take apart. The rear end is not needlessly huge like the Chevrolets of the previous few years. It is a small sized rear end for like a regular, the regular intermediate track setup. Um, it's not really missing any of the decals. There's one thing I didn't do, which I'll talk about in a second, but um, very similar to the last CMR roofing car, painted it white and then taped it up and painted it blue in some areas. You can see I had to get pretty fancy here with the splitter being blue, the a headlight, the in-between area white, and then up here is blue again. I think I had to do multiple tape ups for this one. One problem I had was when I took the tape off, a lot of the paint came off with it for some reason. Um, so that's why there's actually no paint right here. It came up with the tape. And there's no paint right here because it came up with the tape. I don't know why that happened. Um, but the whole side basically got the paint taken off. And so what I had to do was I had to sand it. I had to tape it up, sand it, and repaint the white. So you can actually see the paint line right here. And there's a paint line right here as well. Even though both the sides of that are just white because you can see the blue ends right here. Um, I just had to repaint white here and you can actually see some little like imperfections uh, right there. Um, but it looks, I think it turns out, I think it turned out really good. Uh, and I also painted the side skirts black just so I wouldn't have the problem where the decals didn't line up with the molds. Cause you can see right here uh, on the decal, the jack stand was right here, but it's a little bit farther forward on the die cast. So um, it ain't perfect, but I don't think anyone gives a shit about that little yellow tape, so who cares? I didn't paint the spoiler because it wasn't going to look good, and I think there were a couple races where Ryan Sieg had a yellow, yellow, a white spoiler anyway, so it's kind of accurate anyway. Got a green number up top here, so this car is from Daytona or Talladega, I think, because at the Super Speedways he has a neon green number. It looks terrible, like it's not neon green, but there's nothing I could really do, but it's a dull, dull green. Uh, this car, I actually forgot, the decals are not actually that good on this one. You can see the 39 is under the fog lights, the Mustang fog lights for some reason. Um, so I was actually pretty disappointed with the decals for this one, but I think when I put them on, they looked pretty good. I think the Mustang, I think the Ford in general, it looks like an, it's a very nice looking car. Now the CMR decal doesn't look that great. You can still see where the blue is different than the paint and for some reason the hood looks like a different color blue even though I used the same paint so I'm not really sure what's up with that I've been meaning to talk about this car for quite some time it's been in the background of this video is because I just think it looks it looks so good I mean it's definitely the best one that I've made uh, and I just think it turned out really nice in general I just think not just talking about die casts like in general I think this is like the best Ryan Sieg scheme that they've done so far but of course, but of course, I'm going to think that because it's the newest scheme. I mean, maybe the next year's is probably going to be better just because it's the newest. The only creative liberty I took on this car was I didn't paint the bottom of the splitter light blue, like cyan, basically, like this color blue. Uh, the bottom of the splitter is like that, and I didn't do that because I figured that was just going to get a little bit too complicated, and I already had so much trouble with paint coming off with the tape. I didn't want to do it again, so I didn't. And this car started out as a Chase Briscoe die cast from 2020, and we turned it into a Ryan Sieg from 2021. And that's really all I have to say about this. Uh, I painted this, I painted this white instead of doing the sticker. So I taped up the hood like that and painted, uh, it doesn't matter. 
Uh, but that's really all I have to say about this car right here, the 2021 CMR Roofing Ford. It's a four, so hopefully they'll change the scheme for next year so I can make another one of these, but even if they don't, I probably will. Uh, can I even, uh, how many die casts am I gonna be able to fit on the table here? And so that will do it. These are the five Ryan, or I guess RSS Racing, because that's my Snyder Ryan Sieg. But these are the five custom die casts. I don't have a crazy amount of time to do these anymore. So that's why I was able to make three last year, but only one this year. Uh, and I'll probably continue to do one, maybe not even one a year. This could be the only five I ever make. I guess we'll see what happens next year. Um, but I've been meaning to talk about these ever since I made the first video. So I'm glad I finally got all that out of the way. Uh, and I know a lot of people probably don't aren't going to care as much about this as like the F1 diecast. But it's still another like fun project that I do on the side. So I want to talk about them. And now I don't want to talk about them because I've been talking about them for almost a half an hour. So hopefully I'll never have to do it again. <laughs> That's what videos are for, talking about stuff and then never having to do it again. <laughs> All right. Well, that was a weird way to end this one. Anyway, thank you guys for watching. And I will see you in the next video.